Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling, West Lafayette, Indiana. Our goal today, we're going to get there with Tony Erslin. He'll take the Nike hot seat today, coach of the Purdue Boilermakers. Tony, how are you? I'm doing great, Scott. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much, partner. Now, first recruiting class, it seems like you've been there forever already, but truly your first recruiting recruiting class has gone to eight with six additional signees. The six that we've signed joined your early uh, signees, uh, Nick Limex from uh, Michigan. Uh, is it Limex or Limex? Nate Limex, yeah, Limex. Nate Limex. He's, yeah. he's a good man. He was our very first sign, and uh, uh, we're, we're very ha high on Nate. That'll be uh, one of the names you'll remember for the balance of your career. My first young man I signed to Purdue was out of Michigan. His name was N Nate Limex. I just love that. And then Gavin Murray comes to you from New Jersey. He's another, uh, another the pair of early signees that you, uh, Coach Todd and Tonelli, were able to uh, uh, engineer. And that's what really started things off for you guys. Um, you had some goals that you wanted to achieve, and, uh, uh, and you have to start somewhere. And these are two fine young men to be able to do it with. Yeah, we're, we're exceptionally happy with uh, both Gavin and Nate. I mean, they have the attitude and the work ethic, which is what you need. You know, when, when we're expecting to compete for Big Ten and national championships down the road, you need that attitude and that work ethic, and that's certainly what we're after. And, and they also help fit our weight class needs as well. But they're good people, they're hard workers, and, and we're excited to welcome them on board and, and help create this uh, culture that we want for Purdue Wrestling. One of the things most notable I think about your class of 2015-2016 is the fact that they're not all coming from a place. They're coming from five different states. And that shows the breadth of, of uh, uh, your recruiting, uh, both by you and your staff, and the fact that you're looking across the country for valuable candidates for these exceedingly valuable positions. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, uh, obviously you want to recruit your home state, and uh, I feel very fortunate that uh, Indiana has some great, great kids, especially the underclassmen coming up through the ranks here in the next couple of years. It's very strong, so we are happy to have some kids from in-state also. But then you look around, we've got some hotbeds of wrestling there with Ohio, Illinois, uh, New Jersey. So excited to uh, pull kids from all of those states that are traditionally strong, as well as have a, a good present in the state of Indiana as well. You bet. And we'll start... Uh the balance of the boys at, uh, at heavyweight. I, I see him at 285. Perhaps you see him less or 265. Uh, Worthington, Ohio's James Ford. What can you tell us about James? You know, James, uh, you know, tremendous attitude, um, just wants to succeed and get better. I mean, he just is always looking for ways to get better. He loves to work out for a big man. So he's, he's got a lot of time on the mat. He actually just went 16-0 and 0 with both Greco and Freestyle down at Junior Duels. Nice. And so we see him really have a, a ton of upside. He's just really starting to bloom and progress, trying to figure out what he can be. Who will work with him primarily? Tyrell Todd. I mean, obviously, the, the upper weights are near and dear to my heart as well since, uh, you know, I kind of coached those guys throughout my career. But, but Tyrell Todd has kind of taken over the duties for uh, looking after the upper weights. Is James Ford in any way, shape, or form? Is it a fair uh, a comparison to... A young man that that you coached at at uh, uh, when at Nebraska Brister, if I say that name, can oh, can you make Craig a, Brister? Yeah, can you make a, a comparison between Ford and, and Brister? I mean, I certainly hope so. I hope down the road we can we can draw a lot of comparisons because, as you know, Craig had a tremendous career and was a great competitor. Uh, we see a lot of similarities. You know, James has that, like I said, that work ethic. The style is different. The way he tactically wrestles is a little bit different, but but he has the, the, the same mindset that we really like. Out of Indianapolis, Indiana, at 165 or 74, and I think, you know, that that transition year is so important. Where you start them, do they take a red shirt? But Dylan Liddy or Lighty? Yeah, uh, Dylan Lighty. Lighty comes to us uh, not that far away, Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah, I love, love Dylan. He's a guy that really emerged. He was having a tremendous year. And if you look back on what he'd done in his career as well, it, you know, he's had a strong career. He, fourth at Flow, fourth at Cadet Nationals. And then obviously he followed it up with an undefeated uh, state title this year here in Indiana. Uh, he, I tell you what, he just he loves to train and get better. He's always trying to improve. And, and like I said, that's the culture that we want and that we're trying to promote within the uh, the Purdue wrestling room. And, and we feel like he's only going to add to that. John Morales will join your squad out of Kirkland, Indiana, projected out at 184. Yeah, you know, um, 
kind of a late bloomer, another young man who, um, you know, he's placed in the state of Indiana, but he showed up at Folkstyle Nationals in Cedar Falls this year and was fourth, having only lost to the same guy twice. And and so he really kind of jumped on our radar this spring. And we're just we're just happy that we've got a young man. He's, he's close to home, but um, he's just really starting to kind of figure out what he can be. And he's super motivated as well. Uh, you, you know, Jonathan, I think, is going to fit. He's a grinder. He's a grinder, and he, he's just you know got an insatiable appetite for getting better. And that 84-pound weight class, I can, as you say, he's a grinder. Well, that's that's a wonderful battle weight. Uh, yep. You're neither a heavyweight nor you're a lightweight. That right there, man, I tell you what, it's one of my favorite weight classes for fighting and wrestling. It's just uh, John Morales. I'm looking forward to seeing him stand up and stand out. Austin Nash uh, comes to you from Florham Park, New Jersey, and you see him at 41. I got a trio of guys that I see at 41 in this early class. Tell us about Austin Nash. Austin Nash, another young man, he had a connection with Coach Tonelli, and um, you know he's he's a, an extremely talented kid who's got a lot of growth and development left in him. Uh, we think he has a, a lot of upside. Also comes from a strong background there, though, the Edge uh, School of Wrestling. Turned out a lot of uh, All-Americans, national champs, high-caliber kids come out of that club there at the Edge School of Wrestling, and that's where he hails from. So we, we look forward to having uh, Austin's influence in the in the room. Ernie Siasio there at Edge School. He not too big on promotion, not too big on interviews, but I'll tell you what, he does what he wants to do, and that's teach these kids. And he does an outstanding job. We go to Kyle Todrank out of uh, Fort Branch, Indiana. Again, 41, 49. How do you see him, Coach? And what are his strengths? You know, he, he's an athletic kid. He has a good skill set. Uh, once again, I think his mindset is tremendous, and that's really what we looked for. You know, we wanted to add more guys to the room with the mindset of, hey, we're never satisfied. We're always trying to get better. And certainly Kyle falls under that category. Um, he's, he's a little bit raw yet. Um, he, he's got a long ways to go, but certainly he wants it bad and he's willing to work for it. So we're excited about what he can be. And out of Edwardsville, Indiana, uh, excuse me, Edwardsville, Illinois, <laughs> I could have said Indiana, but I didn't. Um, or I didn't want to anyway. Cole Wasaki <laughs> joins uh, your squad at 141 or 49. And again, here's another projected kid uh, right there in those always tough uh, weights of 41 or 49. Tell us about Cole and what you saw in him. Why did you make that invitation to him? You know, he's, he's a sharp kid. He's a very bright kid. He's very intelligent. Once again, he has the work ethic. You know, it just seemed like a natural fit. He wants to be an engineer. So uh, his goals and what we're looking for, you know, as far as, like I said, the culture of the room really meshed together. Um, Two-time um, state placer there in Illinois. Uh, it was a traditionally strong state. So, yeah, you know, he's got the experience in the background where I think he's he wants to be challenged and he's ready to take the next step in Division One wrestling. Coach, let's talk a little bit about the state of the team overall. Now that you've got your first class coming in, obviously your expectations on their impact may be next year, but more likely the year after. What, uh, what are your expectations from, from uh, the, the team as it stands, plus the addition of these young guys? Yeah, you know, the addition of the young guys is we just we wanted to make the room deeper, um, certainly where everybody's being tested daily. They're forced to operate at a high level daily. That's that's what you hope the additions to the room do. And I certainly think this group will help do that. They'll help enhance that force everyone to fight it, like I said, and operate at a high level daily. So we're, we're happy with the guys we have coming in from that that standpoint, um, you know, as a team, we're just ready to take the next step. We, we got a lot done this year. Certainly having eight national qualifiers out of 10 weights, I think that tied a record for Purdue. Um, so we showed significant growth and potential, but it's all for us this summer's training. It's about taking that next step. Certainly we're not satisfied with what we've done. We, we thought we showed good strides, but certainly you want All-Americans, Big Ten champs and national champs. And, and it's about getting those kids to, to know, not just believe that they can do it, but know that they're going to do it. And, and I think... We've had some good work this summer, and, and knowing that we have another you know, year to keep working towards nationals, I, I feel confident that we can get guys in those positions come March. Tony Ersland, our guest in the Nike hot seat today. Who stands up and, and takes a leadership role for your coach? Is it Welch, Welch, Welch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See what I did there? Or is, what, what senior do you expect a lot of this year, whether it's quiet and authoritative or yeah. leading by example? Who's standing up? 
You know, uh, I think obviously Danny Sabatello is a guy that we'll look to for a leadership position. Danny will be a senior, two-time national qualifier, um, won two matches at nationals last year and had some big wins, you know, during the regular season. So he's a young man that he, he can lead by example. He, he puts the work in. He's a competitive guy. You know, he's, he's not satisfied with what he's done. He's ready to take that next step, I think. So, Danny, you look to take, you know, a leadership role. And then, of course, you mentioned the Welches. We have Doug and Chad Welch, who will also be seniors and were national qualifiers and have proven they can beat good kids. So we, we look for those, those group of guys, those three, to really um, stand up and, um, and, and take the reins and show these guys what it takes to be successful in Division I wrestling. Uh, I do have another, uh, another guy. I have a great group of kids, but I have a senior named uh, Andy Hoselton, who is a tremendous leader. Andy isn't always necessarily in the lineup, but uh, you know, I think guys like that are invaluable to your team because they're mature, they get the big picture, and they are extremely hard workers. So uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a guy like Hoselton because he certainly uh, does a lot for us as well. Out of Prairie Central, Chenoa, Illinois. That's right. Yeah, you're right. There are guys that don't necessarily start on every team across the country, and, and it's not always about the guys that are starting. It's about those guys in the room. It's about those guys that are integral parts of uh, teams just like the Boilermakers of Purdue. If you'd like more information on Purdue athletics, join them online at purduesports.com. You're also real active on social media, Coach, and, and I know that Amanda Dahl and company uh, just do an outstanding job, perhaps some of the best or one of the best jobs in the country. Um, and you guys are, are participating in, in various contests and marketing and brand awareness uh, with NWCA. Talk to us a bit about positioning this team for today and the future yeah i think it's, it's all about you know and this goes to recruiting as well when you're branding your program and being active on social media you want people to know who you are and what you're about and certainly social media is a way to do that and get it in the hands of these young young men that we're going to be recruiting in the future so uh, i've been really excited and i know amanda's going to be mad at me for bringing her up and, and you did as well but i think she's the best in the business she doesn't like the notoriety, but certainly she's been just a tremendous help to me in my first year here and uh, help making us, you know, or getting us out there, getting our message out there and what we're about. So, um, you know, we're, we're proud of what we've done social media wise, and we think it's going to help us, like I said, in recruiting and just in our fan base, getting more people aware of what we're trying to do. So the Boilermaker is truly on the rails of success. The track has been laid new kids coming in. I know there are kids that, that you have commitments from as well, Coach, you cannot talk about, so I won't bring them up out of courtesy, but I know that this is just the tip of the proverbial iceberg, and perhaps that's what will spell the success of the Purdue Boilermakers in a very tough conference. Let's face it, the Big Ten is not getting any easier. The recent additions of both uh, Rutgers and, and uh, um uh, Maryland have have indicated that uh, you know this conference is playing for keeps it's playing for good and every time you go on the mat you guys are feeling it yeah it's it's definitely not getting any easier easier um, but that's what I loved about Purdue I didn't want to be anywhere else but in the Big Ten you know and um, you know I, I what you had mentioned earlier I think we are we're poised to have a great great class this year we've had a, an entire year to really work and talk to and get to know some of the best kids in the country. And, and I really feel like we're headed towards a, a very, very strong recruiting class as well. Uh, I just, you know, I'm, I'm extremely excited about um, the upcoming uh, weeks and, and even months of, of the kids that you will probably see commit and be, be a part of the program. So I think credit needs to go to your assistants as well. Uh, one of them is Coach uh, Zach Tonelli, who I just think the world of, uh, you know, I follow him on Twitter, I follow him on Instagram. Uh, he's uh, an exciting piece of your staff, uh, a guy, you know, what do they say? The strongest coach is always leaning on his staff. Um, yeah. And, and I think that says an awful lot about, you know, the coach that you've become too. But you were one of those guys who were a longtime assistant, always being looked at for a variety of jobs. And then when you get yours, it was so important for you to hire uh, a talented group of guys to, to offer that support. Um, and Zach Tonelli, obviously, is one of them. Yeah, I, I can't say enough about um, Zach and, and Tyrell Todd is the other one. Um, yeah, they're they're they've been tremendous this year. You know, as a head coach, you you got a lot of other things that pull your time away, 
and these guys just jump in and, and take up the slack and run with everything else. And, and um, not just good wrestlers. I mean, they're good, man. They're good role models for these guys. And that was a priority for me. And, and they certainly fit that bill. I think uh, anyone who comes to Purdue can feel good knowing that they're going to be surrounded by good men. And, and, you know, after four or five years of wrestling here, they're, they're, they're young men. They're going to be better men for it as well. And, and, and certainly Zach and Ty are a big part of that. And Tyrell Todd, a three-time All-American and a 2009 Big Ten champion, knows how difficult it can be to climb that box with inside the Big Ten championships. High caliber, national and international freestyle experience. How important is the freestyle scene to you, to the program, to the advancement of Boilermaker Wrestling? It's huge for us. I mean, we want to be really active with USA Wrestling. We want to have our guys fighting to make the uh, the world championship teams on every level. You know, whether it's you know the the field of juniors, the opens, you know the universities. Uh, you know, the best kids in the country obviously aspire to be on those teams, and we're no different. And you know, we have our regional training center uh, up and running, and um, we're excited to really move that forward as well this next year and in the upcoming years. So that's huge. That's for us. It's it's another piece to get these kids better, competing year round, and, and uh, you know, making these teams is what it's all about for us. Talk to us about that regional training center because that is a component. Uh, I think you saw it uh, become important at Nebraska. Uh, I was known it for a good number of years, uh, and now you're seeing Penn State and other programs, you know, really focus on these uh, the regional training centers. Ohio State's another good example, I think. Uh, but they they are uh, it, it puts more bodies on campus of like-minded individuals. Or am I am I selling it short? Is that perhaps part of it? No, that that's a big part of it, you know, and the way, and that's the way I look at it too. I mean, obviously, you want to help these guys, even if they're post grads, fulfill their dreams of making Olympic teams, world championship teams. So that's a big part. But you want to you want to see these other guys have another avenue to reach their goals. I mean, you know, when you think about all the the hard work and, and time that I've put in the sport, and as you know, many others, to have that avenue to support these guys, even when they're post grads, is is great. It's good for the sport, but then it benefits your team as well because you have guys trying to compete at the highest level and they see what it takes day in and day out and that's you know we go back to role models that's what this is they're role models for our guys and then that's how we want to use our regional training center and we want to have the best guys training but we want to show our young guys this is how you have success in the sport tyrell todd zach tenelli work for a pretty good guy somebody i've known for a long time originally out of humboldt iowa he made his name as an assistant coach but before that as a tremendous athlete as well Tony Erslin has been our guest. It's always a pleasure talking to Tony. I warned you, the Nike hot seat, uh, not necessarily always comfortable, but you seem to have handled pressure well. Scott, it's always a pleasure, man. It's, it's never a hot seat talking to you. <laughs> well, i got to put my work in there. i got to amp, amp it up a little bit. you got to get a little tougher then. Yeah, Purdue Wrestling is on the move. The Boilermakers, look for them online at PurdueSports.com. Follow them on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Be a part of the future of this program as Tony Erslin firmly gets this thing going. The state of the team, positive. Uh, great uh, class coming in for next year. Those that have not even been announced, I think you folks are going to be excited. I know I am, and I know Coach Erslin is as well. Coach, thank you so very much for the time today. We look forward to talking again very soon. Thank you, Scott. Always a pleasure.